What's going on, everybody? It's me, Alpha Nerd Entertainment, back with a brand new No Death Run. <laughs> What's going on, guys? We're using Cormando in 1992's Konami Classic Wild Wild West shooting shit up with a shotgun in Sunset Riders for the Sega Genesis. I've yet to play the Super Nintendo version. I've heard very good things, and I'm going to get around to that. But today we're playing the Genesis version, and it is awesome. So let's waste no time and talk about the Game Pro Magazine review. For 1992, these graphics were pretty awesome. Not the best, but really good. I'm going to give them a solid 4.5 out of 5. Its controls are also not perfect. I have a few complaints and a few gripes, but overall they are very good. A 4 out of 5. The sound to me is where this game shines. Each boss has its own specific boss music, which I think is awesome. And each level's music is also very fitting and enjoyable. I especially love the first level's music here. Sound, 5 out of 5. Now, fun factor. Fun factor is awesome. This is also a two-player game simultaneous. It is a great fun experience single player. It is a 5 out of 5 for fun factor. A 5 out of 5 for sound, a 4 out of 5 for controls, and a 4.5 out of 5 for graphics. It's an overall very awesome game, guys, and I had a lot of fun doing this one. Definitely not easy and with one hit deaths. You're welcome, nice girl. All right, Dead or Alive wanted Simon Greedwell for $20,000. So I found something very interesting when playing this game and playing it as much as I did to get to the no death run, which meant I had to memorize where all the enemies were for the most part. And with that experience, it felt a lot like getting good at Altered Beast. Though very different games, something about it with the practice making perfect felt very similar in my time getting good with Altered Beast and Sunset Riders. I just thought that was kind of interesting and something I wanted to point out. This game is really, really good. I also love how it's short. It doesn't overstay its welcome. I would say that it would be cool if it had one extra level. It really would. And in that case, they could offer an extra continue or an extra man in the options menu. I am playing on easy because, guys, it's Sunset Fucking Riders. I did take the time to beat it last night on normal. Then I challenged myself and beat it on hard. I can easily beat it on normal. Hard is definitely tough. It's hit and miss. The bullets do fly a lot quicker, so they really do up the ante a lot on hard. But normal, not that much more difficult. But again, I kind of just wanted to get the NDR, and I thought, fuck it. If anyone wants to complain about to it, pay. go ahead and suck it, because it's fucking Sunset Rider, guys. Okay, so I think it's time you pay. sit back, watch, and learn. I have some great techniques for the boss fights, so just pay attention. Bury me with my money. Oh. A little sick and tired of playing the first two levels, I found to be perfectly honest. Okay, so not to sound cocky when I say to sit back, watch, and learn with the boss fight strategies, but I did take some time to get good at this game, and I did discover some really outstanding ways of fighting the bosses. I'm really proud of that, too, because they're very original to my own, and this is an original No Death Run, something I love to do on my channel. Of course, if you search up No Death Runs of Sunset Riders on YouTube, you will find them. But within the community, I always enjoy adding a first, because collectively, together, we're beating every single game there is without dying. All of us. Every single person that takes parts and does NDRs do different ones, because we're just checking games off the list, and here's Sunset Riders off the list. You know, it's not about competition in those regards, it's about competition with yourself. And I was really competing with myself to beat this game without dying because it wasn't easy. It, surprisingly enough, Rambo 3 was equally as hard. Paco Loco wanted Dead or Alive for $40,000. You gotta love when you get to the end of the level though and the chick there is like, thank you, nice boys. 
It's just, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Nice guys finish last, but they don't, they love nice guys when they're saving them, right? You know, let's be real. I love the sluts in the saloons too, sopping and uh, banging a couple of girls in the bar, in the bank, in the hotel, wherever it may be. Konami really added a nice touch there because you pop out and he's smiling and the girl's kissing them. But you know what went on in those brothels in the wild, wild west. You're pulling in for a quickie and I gotta give it to Konami for including that. Jumping these things can be a pain in the ass. You gotta be careful. The, the level two, honestly, for learning purposes, was one of the hardest levels. Though its boss became really easily with this technique right here. Shoot that guy that popped up first, though, or else he'll get you every single time. Hasta la vista, baby. Okay, level three, my Achilles heel. I don't know if it's just the way the Indians or Native Americans or Indians shoot their arrows and they just move differently than bullets or the fact that they have fire on them and if you walk slightly too far forward, you could also get yourself burnt to a crisp or the falling boulders. Realistically, the, this level and the next level aren't the hardest in the game, but for the no death run, I really did find them hands down the hardest. You would think the last level was, but the last level I discovered a really good trick, and this one was just, this one tortured me. Both this level and the one after this were just brutal, absolutely brutal. If this one wasn't in the game, I would have got the NDR in under 10 tries, but it, it was because of this level that made it a bit of a grind. But again, I really do love the variety in this game. It, it has everything you want in a Wild Wild West game. From the start of the game and like what appears to be like Texas or Mexico with all the saloon doors and all that classic stuff to the train and level two here in the outskirts in the canyons with the Native Americans or the Indians as they called them back in the day with this amazing looking waterfall. Just, I really do like this game and I look forward to playing the Super Nintendo version. Obviously, I think I'll have a bit of nostalgia blinders towards this one. You're welcome, nice girl. You are fucking welcome. Okay, wanted dead or alive for $60,000. Chief Scalp him. A notoriously hard boss that has definitely messed up a lot of people when playing this game. He is the most inconsistent and the hardest to predict and kind of the hardest boss actually. He's still pretty easy because I did get good at this game, but no, overall this guy can still get you if you're slightly too slow or caught off guard because he really does hop all around. This level as well is fun. I do like this level. It's not quite as bad as the level previous, but again, there's just something about this level that just got me almost every single time. To the point where I really got to master the first two levels because I played the first two levels a lot in this no death run. And maybe it was because I kept dying on this one I should have practiced it more instead of resetting, but I don't know. That's one of those things about NDRs. It's like sometimes you should just press on and keep playing so you get those practice in the later levels instead of always hitting restart. But this part here is you descend down on this, I don't even know what to call this thing, uh, you know, an 18th century... I don't know, trolley down to the bottom to a wicked looking boss fight with all the rocks and just with the teepees there. It just looks great. Obviously, you can hop off and grab the free men and the bonus points and the gun. I should talk about the gun and the rapid. Rapid is super important in this game. So there's two power ups. You find the first one, it's gun. It expands your shot. And then you find Rapid, which is super important, which makes it shoot a whole lot quicker. Definitely get Rapid whenever you can. All right, boss fight time. Time to just do it. Be ready for powwow.
it's difficult to explain how to be good at this boss, but I do like to hang underneath him to see where he jumps. Then I move either left or right accordingly and try to dodge those little knives he throws. Keep in mind, you can always shoot them as well. But again, I'm more about just dodging and getting out of the way and landing those shots when he lands and hits the ground. He's a pain in the ass and I hate him. Bam, let's go. Every candy collector. Let's go. Please, don't shoot my brother. He is only following orders. All right, ma'am. We won't shoot him. We? You mean I won't shoot him? Come on, Konami. You couldn't program prompts for one player and two player? Good lord. All right, anyways, the hardest level down, in my opinion. Not the hardest boss, second hardest boss, but hardest level. This level's tricky. This level is tricky. I like to take my time and just sort of inch my way forward at the start, but then I have a strategy where I go balls to the wall and just press where I call it Contra style, where you kind of move as quick as you can at one spot and just shoot and just shoot what you need to shoot and press forward. I love these Doberman pinchers here, or are they Egyptian jackals? I'm not too sure. But this level looks pretty sweet now as you work your way into the town or city, if you will. The trees look a lot like the trees in Castle of Illusion. But anyways, guys, I don't know what else to say than Sunset Riders is awesome. Thank you very much for watching because these two last levels are going to go by pretty quickly. And all I can say is, yeehaw! Fucking Sunset Riders. Great game. Great game. And it's the kind of game I'll pick up and play again. So much fun. You are welcome, nice girl. All right, for $100,000, want a dead or alive, Sir Richard Rose. Let's talk about Sir Richard Rose, as he's notoriously a super cheap and boss. I had to play this a lot to get as good as I did when fighting this guy. He is incredibly cheap. So cheap that it started to really irritate me. And I realized there had to be some tried and true way. There had to be some pattern that he does that he can follow. There has to be some hidden sweet spot. A lot of people talk about following pattern recognition and being defensive. One thing I always look for is some hidden sweet spots. Sometimes these games have areas where they're almost perfectly safe. You just have to find them right down to the pixel. And that's pretty much how this boss worked for me. So all I can say is sit back, watch, and enjoy a original way of fighting Sir Richard Rose. I haven't seen anything like it, and it took me a lot of time to come up with it, and I'm really proud of it because it's a really boss way to fight him. It's unlike any way I've seen anybody else fight him. Most people do the up and down thing. Fuck that noise. Too much work, too much movement. With this technique, less is more. So just like the last level, I start to level off inching forward, taking my time, being very careful, and I reach a spot where I know to go balls to the wall and press forward. These are one of the spots where it's balls to the wall, press forward, shoot, move fast, and eventually slide your way to the final fight where there is a cool way of hitting the bomb, which I do execute. I don't prefer not to do it, but I did manage to do it. It shortens the boss fight. <sighs> Cheerio, old chap. The only reason I'm like saying fuck is because now I need to avoid an explosion. After the explosion, Richard moves around really quickly and he can get a quick shot off. Luckily, he jumped down. That's a bit of the luck with the RNG. I had to move to the left, but then I had to move back to the right. Where I'm sitting right now causes Richard, when in the doorway, not to be able to attack. When he's in that motion, he considers me too close and he tries to get in a position to get a better shot off. But I'm in a key, safe spot where I'm able to pick my shots and destroy his ass and make it look easy. Let's fucking go, guys. No death run. 
of Sunset Riders for the Sega Genesis. And I did the little extra special there where you shoot the bomb to um, shorten the boss fight. I don't normally like to do it because you put yourself a little bit out of position in danger of the bomb. But I did it the boss way with one up Cormando, the only guy to play with. Maybe now that I've done this, I'll attempt to do it with Kevin Bacon, a.k.a. Billy. The other night I beat it on normal, and I went beat it on hard. Yeah, I did it on easy for the no death run, but guys, it's Sunset Riders, 1992 Konami's. Doesn't give you much better of an ending on hard, let me tell you. Show some horses running off into the sunset. It's not all that great. Oh, let's go. Thank you very much for watching, guys. So let's just put in the high score. Uh, what do we got? A. Let's go A and E. Alpha Nerd Entertainment. Only fourth, but whatever. <laughs> We're not playing for high score. We're playing for a no death run. There it is. <laughs> I have a couple scores higher tonight. Actually, no, that was my highest tonight. All right, well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Appreciate it.